Sometimes the best move is to do nothing. I'll say it again. Sometimes the best move is for you to do nothing. In other words, don't answer the call, don't reply to the text message or the email, don't give them a piece of your mind, don't tell them about themselves, don't try and correct them. Sometimes, church, the best response is no response at all. No response at all. But you only learn that, you only get that when you have wisdom. Because let me tell you something. Things are going to come, left and right. Things are going to come expectedly, unexpectedly. And if you are not careful, you will be tossed to and fro trying to address everything. You can't. You cannot address it all. We wear ourselves thin, we wear ourselves out mentally, emotionally. Some of you in this room have worn yourselves out financially, trying to meet everybody else's need. You can't. Sometimes the proper response is, I can't help you. I don't have an answer. That takes a great deal of confidence to be able to say that, though. And, and having the wisdom to discern when to give the answer, when to withhold it. Even more, church, we will have to know some things but not express them. We'll have to have some answers but not provide them. When we put our trust in the Lord, we are intentionally removing our hands and our mouth from the situation. Ooh. We can lay in there for a minute. Well, I didn't go over there. You know, I just I just called and I just told them what I thought. Yeah, so you were still involved in it. You were still involved in it. But trusting in the Lord means removing your hands and your mouth from the situation and accepting the direction of the Lord. After all, the Apostle Paul says, oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments. How inscrutable are his ways. In other words, the wisdom of God is far deeper than any of our natural insight. The wisdom of God, it covers the entire creative order, that which, is, that which was, is, and is to come. In his infinite wisdom, God understands how all the pieces of the puzzle fit together. But when we act out of our own limited, finite understanding, we run the risk of interfering with divine plans. When we say, I'm going to take matters into my own hands, and I'll deal with it, our, our scope of view is limited. And so we don't know all the intricacies. And so you say, I'm just going to give her a piece of my mind, ask me what she say, all that stuff. <laughs> but the truth is, you doing that could actually cause a greater firestorm. Because you don't know all of the stuff that's going on at home. You don't know all the stuff that's going on on that person's job. You don't know what is actually causing them to react and respond the way they're responding. Let me tell you something. There's a background, there's a context to each of us in this room. To each of us in this room. I'll make that new plan. You want to know why I, I believe or why one of my seven pillars is, is excellence? A part of it is because of the church that I went to in North Carolina. The Upper Room Church of God in Christ. They functioned at a high, high level of excellence. A hundred percent, a hundred percent of the time. Administration, tight. Praise and worship.
was just tight. Everything, every single thing was just full on. It was, it was like a machine, just, just the way they did things. I saw that, and I saw how God moved within that. That's why I saw miracles. That's why I saw divine healing. That's, that's where the Lord moved on me in the area of finances. I saw it with my own eyes. I saw it. I saw multi-millionaires shouting and dancing and rolling on the floor. I saw multi-millionaires laying hands on the sick and they recovered. I saw it with my own eyes. Yeah. In order to understand me, you have to understand that that's where I've been. That's what I've seen. In order to understand part of the reason why I, why I preach a social gospel, why we talk about justice and liberation in this church, it's because of the context of my first pastor. It was at an Afrocentric church in the inner city where we were dealing, we were dealing with gang violence, we were dealing with, uh, with illegal guns on the street. We were dealing with all, we were dealing with HIV and AIDS. We were, we were dealing with real ministry issues. In order to understand why I preach, why I, excuse me, why I preach, what I preach, you have to understand that context about it. I'm saying all that to say this. Too often, we want to react to too often we want to react to something or someone without having a full idea of the context. Yeah. 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 Why are they behaving the way they're behaving? Why are they responding the way they're responding? I said it last Sunday to you all. You know, we've all met someone like this, you know, who said, you know, Back in the day, I would have to, I would, I would, people in the street, they knew me. You know, all this, all this other hard talk and, you know, I put this Bible down and do all this other stuff. But that kind of talk, we said it last Sunday, that that kind of talk is indicative of trauma. It's indicative of hurt. It's indicative of, of unhealed pain and wounds. But when you don't take the time to hear the voice of God and wisdom. You just react to it. Listen, now is not the time to be reactionary. Now is not the season to just react. In this season, we have to intentionally respond. There's a difference between response and reacting. How many of you, how many of you have, you know, uh, it happened to me just a few months ago. I got up from the, from the couch, from the sofa, and ran to the kitchen to, to grab something, to grab a snack. And uh, I, I moved so fast that I, you know, I, I hit my toe against the, against the, um, the sofa, the, the edge of the sofa. And immediately I reacted, you know, oh! Mm -hmm. just, just immediately. Or have you ever hit your elbow in that right spot? You know, where, where, where all of the tingling sensation just goes, just goes through, and automatically you respond, oh! Not a, not, not, not a good moment. We're just reacting. That's a quick reaction. Quick reaction. We don't want to react. We don't want to react. We want to respond. Because responses take thought. They're far more intentional. So someone says something out of pocket to you, someone is behaving in a way that is unmannerable, instead of you or instead of us, just flying off the handle and reacting? What the Holy Spirit is trying to do with us in this series is give us the wisdom to respond. 
the wisdom to respond. I see you're acting crazy. Others see you're acting crazy. I'm just not going to respond. I'm going to let you act crazy. While we're all looking sane <laughs> and sober-minded and functioning really in our spiritual gifts, you're the one who's looking like a sore thumb. And that, that doesn't just mean for church spaces. That means for your jobs and your careers and your family. There are some things that we cannot react to. We will have to intentionally respond. Amen, Amen. Hey, everybody, it's me, Darrell. I hope you have been enjoying my content. And if you have, then you'll love my book. Uh, it's called The Love Challenge, A 21-Day Journey in Love. I wrote it a few years ago, but it's circulating again. And so I thought I'd take some time to just kind of point it out to all of you. Uh, pretty much it's a 21 day journey uh, devotional for those of you who like to spend some time quietly you know processing through your thoughts meditating things like that I love those things so uh, but each day it focuses on a specific scripture and questions um, and really gives you the opportunity to kind of dive into your own inner life so you definitely want to take some time uh, and purchase the book and let me know what you think I'd love to be in conversation with you about it. Remember, the love challenge, a 21-day journey in love. When we react, we neglect the fact that God is the one who sees the big picture. And if we're not careful, we will put ourselves into something and interfere with divine plans. Because just maybe, hear this, just maybe, the Lord wants them to make a fool of themselves. Just maybe. The Lord actually wants them to make a fool of themselves. So that they can learn the lesson. Far too many of us are trying to fix stuff. We're trying to correct stuff. And the Lord is saying, yeah, because you keep stepping in, because you keep stepping in, they never learn the lesson. They're never able to mature. After a while, parents, you know it best, after a while, you have to let your children bump their heads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> after a while, you have to let them bump their heads. You have to let them get a bruise. <laughs> like we used to say, <laughs> bust the head open down to the white meat. Like you have to. <laughs> it's sad to say. It's sad to say, but for some people, that is the only way they are going to learn. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only way they're going to learn. And so you keep saying, don't touch the stove. Don't touch the stove. Don't touch the stove. Don't touch the stove. Right. Me and Mama steep yourself, you know. Don't touch that stove, don't touch that stove. But I'm over there looking you in your eyes. I, I never understood that my children do that. Like, like they look at you as if you don't see their, their hand, like what they're doing. You know? But that's how some people still are, even in their adulthood. They're still like that. They haven't matured in their personhood. I find it so interesting, so very interesting, that we can preach all around the world. We can teach and do these wonderful things in the name of the Lord. We can have great missionary exploits, do all this stuff, win brands, do all this stuff, and still in our personhood be immature. Be immature. We can have prophetic insight, prophetic wisdom and knowledge, and all of that stuff, and still can't manage our money. A part of what's going on for us, I believe, in this room is that God is moving us 
beyond the spiritual platitudes and saying, no, I need to deal with the you of you. I need to deal with the you of you. And that doesn't mean that we are, you know, uh, completely wrong or completely out of the pocket. No, but it does mean this. Remember in the book of, uh, in the book of Revelation, where, where, the, where the Spirit of the Lord says, you have done these things well, but I have this one ought against you. This one ought. And so it is for us. We are doing well in ministry. We are growing. We are expanding. How many of you have grown, have expanded in your personhood since you've been connected to this ministry? Let me see your hands. I see you up there. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not that we aren't growing. It's not that we aren't expanding. What it is, is that there's still little foxes that can spoil the vine. He says, you're doing well, but I have this one thing against you that we need to work on. We need to work on this. We need to work on your temper. I, I'm not ashamed to say it, not ashamed to say it at all. My mother always tells me, you have no patience. <laughs> no patience. That is an area the Lord is still working on me. I'm not saying I don't want to do anything else, Jesus. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> There's still areas that God is working on us in. Let me, let me hasten here. Let me hasten here. All right. Uh, let's... Church, get out of your own understanding. Get out of your own way. Tell somebody, get out of your own way. Get out of your own You're getting in your own way. You're getting in your own way. Get out of your own way. Lean out to your own understanding. Again, this is not about self-sufficiency. This is not about self-dependence. This is about whether or not you are able to humble yourself enough to trust what God is doing. Can you humble yourself enough to seek the counsel of the Lord? Let's, let's, let's go over it. The prophet Daniel says, he gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. Daniel 2 and 21. If you acknowledge God in all of your ways, the Bible says, he shall direct your paths by the way of wisdom. Speaking to the fact that God directs our pathways, the Bible tells us this. Psalm 37. The Lord directs the steps of the God. He delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they will never fall. For the Lord holds their hand. Proverbs 16 and 9. We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. Psalm 31. But I trust in you, Lord. You are my God. My life and times are in your hands. That's one of my favorite scriptures. Proverbs 4. I have directed you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in right paths. Isaiah 42. I know this is a lot of word coming at you. Just receive it. Isaiah 42. I will lead the blind by a way they do not know. In paths they do not know. I will guide them. I will make darkness into light before them and the rugged places plain. Psalm 119. Your word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my pathway. Proverbs 19. Many are the plans of a person's heart, but it is the Lord's will that will be done. Isaiah 48, I am God, your God, who teaches you how to live right and well. I will show you what to do. I will show you where to go. I will show you my wisdom. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I will show you. This pushes back. This pushes back against what the, no, this pushes back against what we are taught in the world. Because in the world, we are taught that we have to be assertive. Right. We have to be aggressive. We have to walk into a room and throw our weight around. We have to interrupt people as they speak. <laughs> Thank you. 
We have to show up and make our presence known. This, this, is, the, this is the joy of the kingdom of God, though. The kingdom of God is strikingly different. And it, the kingdom of God is an oppositional force against what the world tells us. Here in the kingdom of God, Lenore, we are told that in order to go up, we have to humble ourselves. In the kingdom of God, we are told in order to get, we have to give. In the kingdom of God, we are told in order to lead, we have to serve. The kingdom of God is an oppositional force against what we're taught in the world. Rejecting what the world says concerning how we live our lives and heeding, heeding wisdom. Yeah. Very soul. I know this this isn't coming today with, with any, you know, shout at him. <laughs> Not that. The Lord is trying to do something for our lives. I don't, like I said, I don't have the full, the, the full knowledge of it, but I know that. He's flushing out, he's working out some things for you individually. Yeah. Tell them, Pastor, to get wisdom. Tell them, Pastor, they're going to ask for it, they're going to ask for wisdom, because they're going to need it. They're going to need it. So they don't have to repeat it again. I don't know about you. I never stayed back. I was too scared of my mother. <laughs> there was none of that. There was none of that repeating the class over. There was none of that going to summer school to make up the class. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. There was none of that. I'm here to tell some of you, you don't have the time to go through the situation again. You don't have the time. God knows you don't have the energy. I'm not going back to, I'm not going back through some of the stuff that I went through. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. What was that old statement? Robin Peter to pay Paul and doing all that stuff? I'm not doing it. Listen, I'll say it this way. For anyone who has ever, I'll just say, anyone like me who didn't grow up with a silver spoon in their mouth, I've already been there. I'm not going back through that again. I'm not doing that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of us in this room, we've already I'm not living in that again. Some of us in this room, we've already lived in the place. Letters and potential shutoffs and all that stuff. Make up your mind, I'm not doing that again. I've already gone that way. I've learned that lesson. You've already humbled me there. Mm -mm. I'm saying that to say this. Learn the lesson so you don't have to repeat the course. Learn the lesson so you don't have to repeat the course. I said it to one of my students I saw this year again. In my, I was like, oh, you here again? Back. Oh, Professor Rich, I dropped the class. Oh, I didn't know. Oh. No, don't drop the class. I know you want to get out of the fire. Stay right there. Stay, stay right there in the fire. Stay right there in the chaos. Stay right there until the Lord works out of you what needs.
needs to be worked out. Stay right there. So that 10, 15 years later, you won't be back there again. Nope. I done been through that. I done worked two and three jobs to take care of something. I'm not doing that again. inspired, empowered, and challenged by the sermon. Listen, if you've been blessed by this ministry, feel free to follow us on social media. The information is on screen below. And if you'd like to sow into this ministry or partner with us, then follow the giving prompts on your screens as well. And for your love gift of $25 or more, you'll receive a free copy of my book, Again, thank you for joining us in worship today. And as I often say, may the Lord's choicest blessings be yours. God bless you.